What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, and welcome to week eight of my weekly NFL pick show for the 2014-2015 NFL season. It is a cold and rainy day in Nova Scotia today, which is rather apropos because week seven really did rain on my parade. Had an average week straight up, had a not very good week against the spread. We're going to get into all that. I'm making a pledge to you at the beginning of this video. This video is going to be less than 18 minutes long. I promise you, I promise you. We're going to start with the big three against the spread from week seven. If you've been watching the last couple of videos, you know that I've gone four and two over the last two weeks on the big three. Unfortunately, kind of came back down to earth in week seven. I only went one and two. I told you to take Seattle minus six and a half. Told you to take Buffalo minus five and a half. And I told you to take New Orleans plus three. Happily, that one did work out. They lost the game, but it was within three points. So I only went one and two last week. I'm nine up, 11 down with one push on the season. And overall against the spread in week seven, I only went six and nine. It's not the direction you want to be moving in. 49 up, 55 down, and two pushes on the season. Taking a look at the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze results from week seven. I had a good week. I went three and one with these lock picks. I missed my bronze pick. I told you to take Chicago to beat Miami in Chicago. That did not work out. Miami beats Chicago, almost doubles them up, 27 to 14. The Bears are still winless at home, and it appears that they have a bit of a disjointed locker room, depending on what media reports you tend to listen to. What is not disjointed on that team is Matt Forte. He is still a beast. 16 overall touches, 109 all-purpose yards, and he scored twice. But big ups to the Dolphins for going into Chicago and beating the Bears. My silver pick, the self-proclaimed biggest betting mismatch of the week, Baltimore at home against Atlanta. I told you to take Baltimore to win. That's exactly what happened. It was a three-possession game. Baltimore beats Atlanta 29-7. My mismatch call here pays off, and the Ravens win the game despite turning the ball over three times. They did manage, when they kept the ball, to get over six yards per play on offense, and they sacked Matt Ryan five times, not giving Matty Ice too much time with the ball back there to hit those talented receivers. So Baltimore pays off if you took them at home. For my gold pick, I told you to take Arizona to beat Oakland. That also worked out. Arizona wins the game comfortably, 24-13. The Raiders had their chances in this game. They actually forced the Cardinals into 15 third down plays. That is no easy task, really, even with the, you know, the Cardinals, whose offense has been kind of iffy sometimes. So they force them into 15 third downs, the problem being Arizona went 9 for 15 on third down, kept a lot of those drives alive. Oakland, on the other hand, only went 4 of 12 in third down situations. Oakland had a chance, didn't work out, Arizona wins the game. And the platinum pick, I told you to take New England at home to beat the Jets. That worked out, but... Uh, Oh, barely. Uh, New England wins that game 27-25. to 25. Really back and forth affair. It's hard to predict which Jets team is going to show up. The one that showed up this week was the one that has a good run game and a good offense. Luckily for the Patriots, Shane Vereen seems to have emerged as the back to watch in the New England backfield. Had a very Matt Forte kind of game. 16 all-purpose touches, 114 yards, and he scored twice. So I got my platinum pick, I'm now 6-1. and one. I got my gold pick, I'm up to 3-4. and four. I got my silver pick, I'm now 5-2. and two. I missed the bronze pick, so I dropped down to 3-4. and four. Straight up in week 7, I had a respectable week. It's 9-6. and six. It's no standing ovations, but no hysterical laughter. But it was my first week in three weeks where I didn't hit double digits straight up, so I was a little disappointed in it. 64 up, 41 down, and one tie on the season. I did make strides, however, in the Bridgewater's Finest Private Pick'em Pool for Season 3. Uh, I jumped up a couple of spots. I'm now up to 18th out of 38. We picked up one more manager. 554 out of 859 possible confidence points for a season-long clip of 64%. In Week 7, I raked in 83 out of 120 possible confidence points. Pretty good number, considering I was 9 and 6. That's a 69% clip, higher than my season average, so moving in the right direction. Shout out to our week seven winner chase the boss who had a phenomenal week in week seven going 13 and two really navigated those landmines 13 and two 104 out of 120 possible confidence points that's a clip of 87 percent and a huge week 
and a shout out to our new overall leader. It's a familiar name from earlier in the season, Teddy Ted's Varsity Squad, who is now 72 up, 33 down, and one tie on the season. 596 out of 859 possible confidence points, a season-long clip of 69%. To give you guys a bit of an image of how close this Pick'em League is, the top 21 out of 38 that we have, the top 21 are only separated by 48 points. The top 10 separated by 21. The top 5 are only separated by 8 points. It is a very, very, very close league. It's not too late to get in on it. Anything can happen. One really good week and one really bad week from some of the folks at the top, and you can jump right up in there. But shout out to Chase the Boss for winning week 7, and Teddy Ted's Varsity Squad for once again becoming the overall leader. I'll take this opportunity in the show to remind you that if you go to the description of this video, you'll be able to see all of my results from week 7, all of my against the spread picks for week 8, all the details about joining the Bridgewater's Finest Pick'em Pool for Season 3, and links to other high-quality YouTube NFL prognosticators that come on here every week, do the same thing that I'm doing. Some of them much better than me, some of them a little bit better than me, most of them better than me, but you guys love me anyway, so I appreciate the fact that you watch. Go to the description of the video, you'll find all that information there. Enough of the past, let's deal with the here and now. We're going to get into our week 8 picks. Uh, an early start on Sunday because of the game in London, but we got the Thursday nighter to look forward to. A big slate of games on Sunday. Let's get into them. We're going to start with the big three against the spread for week 8. My number three play on the big three is in the Houston at Tennessee game. Tennessee are two and a half point underdogs at home. Tennessee's coming off of a devastating two-point loss in Washington, a loss that I predicted, whereas Houston is coming off of really blowing that lead in the Monday Nighter in Pittsburgh against the Steelers, losing 30-23. to It was troubling to me that Houston seemed to run out of gas, except for J.J. Watt, who was a goddamn tank, but the team itself really seemed to run out of gas, and Pittsburgh just kind of kept going at the same sort of pace, and Pittsburgh overtook them, beat them. It is troubling for anybody thinking of betting on the Texans. Tennessee's a very unpredictable team. It's hard to tell, kind of like the Jets, hard to tell which Tennessee team is going to pick up. They've got a good defense when they want to have a good defense. They just don't necessarily always have a good defense. That had to be a tough loss for them to swallow in Washington. Speaking of Washington, how about Colt McCoy apparently becoming the new starting quarterback if RG3 isn't good to go? Here's my first question for you to answer in the comments section below. Who do you think the Redskins are better off with if Robert Griffin III is not in the picture? Colt McCoy or Kirk Cousins? Or is it Kirk McCoy and Colt Cousins? FYI, those are both great wrestling names. I know Houston's staying on the road this week, and you don't like to bet with teams who have been on back-to-back -back road games, but I kind of like Houston here. I'm going to take Houston minus 2.5 in Tennessee. I think they're overall the better team that should win this game. My number two play on the big three against the spread this week comes in the Green Bay at New Orleans game. New Orleans favored by two at home. Saints were another team last week that suffered a devastating loss, 24-23 to in Detroit. That's a game that they should have won. Meanwhile, with Green Bay, they dominated Carolina start to finish, doubling them up better than doubling them up, beating the Panthers 38-17. to Packers offense is really starting to roll now, putting up multiple 30-point games in the last little while. Offense is really, really cruising, and the defense is playing really, really well. I think over the last four games, they're averaging allowing less than 20 points. Given that at the beginning of the season, the Packers' defense was one of the bitches of the NFL and Carolina was considered to be this great defense, it really is a role reversal there. Saints looked like they were breaking out for that big game that I've been lauding that they're just waiting to have. Didn't end up working out that way, and like I said, they should have won that game. But a shout-out to Stephen Coleman's Lions for, you know, pulling off the comeback and winning without Calvin Johnson. That was a huge win for that team. I can't figure out why New Orleans is favored here. I guess because they're at home. But, I mean, Green Bay seems to be really gelling, coming together, clicking as a team. I can't see Green Bay losing this game. So, my second play on the big three against the spread, I'm going to tell you to take Green Bay plus two. I know they're on the road. They don't play as well on the road as they do in Green Bay, obviously. But I think this is a good matchup for them. I think they beat the Saints in New Orleans. Green Bay plus two. And my top play on the big three against the spread this week comes in the Indianapolis at Pittsburgh game. Pittsburgh are three-point dogs at home. 
Colts are starting to feel like a team of destiny in the AFC. Despite not possessing a top 10 ground game on offense, they are the second best offensive team in football right now with the top rated passing attack. Not to mention being rated inside the top 10 across the board defensively and being two games clear of the second place team in their division. Don't get me wrong, I was impressed with Pittsburgh winning that Monday nighter, coming from behind. They showed they got some guts. Le'Veon Bell really stepped up, had a really good game both on the ground and through the air. But the Colts are the Colts, and they seem to be the team of destiny. That being said, I'm having no luck. <laughs> betting against Andrew Luck this year, so I'm not going to. My top play on the big three against the spread, I'm going to tell you to take Indianapolis minus three at Pittsburgh. I'm rolling with road teams all across the big three one more time this week. Now let's take a look at the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for week eight in the NFL. We're going to start with the bronze pick where once again I am three and four. My bronze pick comes in the Miami at Jacksonville game. Jacksonville finally got their first win of the year. Awesome for the Jags, except you probably lost the inside track to getting the first overall pick. Congratulations, Jacksonville. Can't even win at sucking. Meanwhile, Miami might be one of the deceptive teams in the NFL this year. I think that defense is deceptively good. I think it's underrated. Uh, the offense, Ryan Tannehill, sometimes week to week, I have Ryan Tannehill on a fantasy team. Some weeks, he's outperforming a guy like Matt Stafford, who has been on that fringe of being elite for a long time. That's probably a tip of the hat to letting you know I think Miami's going to win this game. Back-to-back -back home games for Jacksonville, that's great. Do I think Jacksonville is the kind of team that's going to win back-to-back -back games? No, I don't. They look like they've got a developing running back there, which is good news for them. And again, I've been less critical of Blake Bortles than other people have been, but I think Miami wins this game fairly handily. So for the bronze pick, I'm going to tell you to take Miami on the road to beat Jacksonville. Let's go to the silver pick, where again I am 5-2 on the season. For my silver pick, it comes in the St. Louis at Kansas City game. St. Louis used the benefit of 642 bad calls and every trick play in the book to beat Seattle at home last week by two points. Meanwhile, Kansas City made a statement, hanging tough with a very good San Diego Chargers team, beating them 23-20. Now Kansas City goes back home, St. Louis hits the road, they are not a team that travels well. I think Kansas City's defense is going to have more than enough to handle this rotating whoever's going to get the majority of the carries this week in St. Louis' backfield. Looks like it's probably going to be Trey Mason. Uh, I hitched my wagon to Zach Stacy, and that wagon moved very, very slowly, so unfortunately that didn't work out. Looks like Trey Mason's the primary back in St. Louis now. I don't think it's going to make a difference. I like like Kansas City here all day at home, so for the silver pick, I'm going to tell you to take Kansas City at home to beat St. Louis. For the gold pick, where I'm 3-4, and four, I am bound and determined to get this gold pick back to 500, so why not take it? The Denver Broncos at home to play San Diego. It's not like this is a lock pick by any means, and I'm kind of worried about that line of minus 7.5. I know what I said last week, but it's a little bit over a touchdown. San Diego's defense is pretty good. Uh, could the Broncos have a letdown from the fact that Peyton Manning set the touchdown record last week? I don't know. There's a lot of questions marks in this game surrounding that line. In terms of who wins the game, I really and honestly can't see Denver losing this game. There's my second question for you. Look at Denver's remaining schedule. I want you to tell me in the comments section below how you think Denver is going to finish this season. What's their record going to be at the end of the year? 14-2? and two, Do you think it's going to be better? Do you think it's going to be worse? Let me know in the comments section. But, but I do like Denver here. I mean, that team is so well put together, and it's so dominant, and they've got the right pieces in the right places doing what they need to do. I like Denver here all day. For the gold pick, I'm going to tell you to take the Denver Broncos at home to beat a very good Chargers team. That's the gold pick. My platinum pick comes in a divisional matchup, which is usually a bad idea, but this divisional matchup, I think I feel pretty good about it. The Dallas Cowboys playing at home to the lowly Washington Redskins. Again, I want you to tell me whether you think the Redskins are in better hands with Cousins or Colt McCoy. I think it's debatable. Cousins has struggled in his last couple of games. I do think he's a good, solid quarterback. Could potentially be a starting quarterback in this league. I've always kind of had a soft spot for Colt McCoy, so I don't really know which way I go on that question. But I do know which way I'm going in this game, and that is with Dallas. I think if 
all Dallas lined up with was their offensive line and DeMarco Murray, they would probably still win this game. DeMarco Murray could have a 200-yard game on his hands. He could score three touchdowns. I think this is going to be an absolute blowout. Take the over. If you're betting the over-under, I don't care what it is. Dallas beats Washington in Dallas. That is my platinum pick. Now let's take a look at the rest of my straight-up picks for Week 8, 2014-2015 NFL season. Here they are. That's the week eight show for you folks. Comments, hate and love, you know where they go. Comments section below. I hope I can edit this thing down to under 18 minutes so it doesn't make me a liar. Let's go to the comment of the week. And the first time on the comment of the week, we've got a hater. This comment came from Matt M, who is a faceless YouTube internet troll. His comment was, stop stealing other YouTube background music, be original. Well, as I said, thank you for the view, Matt, and thank you for the money that comes along with the view. This is a perfect opportunity to shout out the individual who has provided me with my music for the last three seasons. That would be Kevin McLeod from Incompetech.com. I list him in my disclaimer in the description of the video every single week. His music is fantastic. It's been featured in movies. It's been featured in documentaries. His music is great. If you ever need royalty-free music, as long as you attribute it to where it has to go, you should use Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. So that's the answer to Matt M. It's not other YouTubers' background music. It comes straight from Mr. Kevin McLeod himself. So stick it up your ass. Thank you, Kevin McLeod, for the music. And thank you, Matt M., for the view and the money. That's the show for this week. Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. There's week eight. Let's hope it goes better than week seven. And I'll see you again for week nine.